first category being awarded tonight is golf professional or teacher category. And those are only two hats worn by tonight's inductee. Buddy Cook's influence in the game stretches as far and wide as his mustache of a few years back throughout the state of Texas and beyond. A professional teacher, developer, owner, operator, and tournament director, his impact has touched countless people in the game, one way or another. His professional career began almost a half century ago at Oak Hills Country Club, and tonight he joins his mentor, Harvey Lauderdale, in this hall. Mr. Lauderdale was in the first class of inductees almost 40 years ago. After three years as an assistant, he would find his first head professional job and start a trend of spending a few years outside of Texas before returning home to put what he had learned to good use. After two years at the Tulsa Country Club, he took the head position at Royal Oaks Country Club in Dallas for five. Another stretch across the Red River, and Buddy was back in Texas, this time as the director of golf at the Dominion in San Antonio from 1984 to 1988. After three years at the Vintage in the Desert, he was back in the Hill Country, developing, managing, and directing the golf operation at La Cantera Golf Club, for the best new daily fee course in 1995. Along the way, he earned honors, such as the 1999 Southern Texas PGA Golf Professional of the Year, America's top 100 best golf shops, and he became known as a mentor or sounding board to more than 24 future club professionals and instructors, such as Billy Harmon, Randy Smith, Warren Chancellor, and so many others. Prominent golf students came his way as well. Tom Landry, Martina Navratilova, Mario Andretti, and an up-and-coming junior named Justin Leonard, just to name a few. There was also a singer whose name was straight, but the game was not. <laughs> in 2009, this hall came calling for the first time as Joe Black tapped Buddy to lead the effort to reconstitute the Texas Golf Hall of Fame as its chairman, where he revitalized the hall during his tenure until 2015, and since then, with his warm enthusiasm and tireless effort. The Cook family has had to share Buddy all these years with all of us who have pulled it in for lessons, merchandise, guidance, and wisdom. For that, we are thankful. For this institution and this game would not be quite as rich or friendly without a buddy like him. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone's buddy, Buddy Cook. Wished I had my camera. I do. Y'all stay, keep standing. I can't stand this. Don't stop now, whatever you do. Let me find camera. Oh, Jesus, thank you for this. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Look at that. Boy, my mama's up in heaven right now, Adele. And Adele said, oh, Lawson, look at him. Look at him. She's got tears in her eyes. <laughs> said, Lawson's going to be in the Texas Golf Hall of Fame. And my dad would say, Adele, don't get excited yet. Dad ain't getting him the trophy. <laughs> <sighs> Not yet. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't like me, it might be a good time for you to go get a cocktail. <laughs> this could take a little while. I have a lot to say. That's going to get heavy in just a minute. I'll hand it to you. A little condom fell off. I'm sorry. <laughs> a little large, but it's still there. <clears throat> Are we having fun yet? This is my night. This is like, this is my life, the old program, you know. I want to tell you all something. There's nothing like this. By the way, my name's Billy Cavender. I'm here to speak on behalf of Buddy Cook. 
What an honor this is. It's surreal to be here. And uh, it's a culmination of things that I can't even put into words, even me. And uh, to think what is happening to me could happen to anyone. And I know there are a lot of other people that deserve this award as much as I do or more, but fortunately for me, they're not here tonight. <laughs> and, and, and so I was thinking about making some notes, you know, and going like this and looking up and down, and, but I'm not smart enough to do that and talk at the same time. So what you're hearing from me tonight is from my heart, and I would like to show a, a, see a show of hands of those of you who know me and play golf with me that helped me look for my ball in the left rough. <laughs> oh my God, it's um, unbelievable. I've seen the left side of every golf course from here to Scotland. But uh, I, I must say that uh, there's one reason I'm really here, and that's because of Eileen, my wife. We were married 17 years, and then we, we you know, divorced for two. I call it two years off for bad behavior. And then we remarried for 17 more, and I wouldn't be here without her because she encouraged me to uh, go to college, graduate from college, join the PG of America. She helped me get through business school, and uh, I, I owe her everything because and when we did the development at uh, Dominion, I mean, she did all the accounting, and that's just when computers were coming on board, and uh, she jumped right into it, as Jerry Smith can tell you. Uh, he came over, and Eileen, she knew, she, she just was a stalwart of the business of golf. And so, uh, so that's the main reason I'm here. And then Hardy Loudermilk is, uh, was pro of the year 1968 in the nation. I had the honor of working for him for three years. And I'll never forget the day. I graduated from Sol Ross out in West Texas, May the 18th, 1969. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I have a shrug in my throat. And, uh, and so, uh, I get no respect. And so, in May the 20th, I went to work at Oak Hills. And Mr. Loudermilk called me in his office and he said, buddy, I want to talk to you. I thought, oh my God, what, what, what have I done wrong? And I said, down, I said, yes, sir, Mr. Lauderman. He said, well, buddy, there's something I want to talk to you about. And I'm going to raise you $50 a month to $450 under one condition. And I said, yes, sir, Mr. Lauderman, what's that? And he said, you can't tell the other two assistants. And I said, don't worry, Mr. Lauderman, I'm just as embarrassed about it as you are. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to tell a soul. Going to a college degree and go home and tell my mom and dad I've started a job for $400. And by the way, I got half my lessons. <laughs> and the lessons were $4 a half an hour. I got two and Hardy got two, and I was overpaid. <laughs> and that's how I started my career, and it was a wonderful career at Oak Hills. And met so many neat people, some of the people still in this room that I met back then. And uh, San Antonio has been so good to me. I've seen it grow from nothing to an outstanding uh, resort area hosting the Texas Open. Now, if you haven't seen what's happened to the Texas Open in Valero, they just extended for 10 years, 10 more years to have Texas Open, and we will be the week before Augusta, the Masters. Congratulations to Valero. And by the way, they've increased the purse, so that's going to solidify that date, and they've done so much and raised so much money for, for San Antonio, and Valero deserves a huge round of applause. I mean it. So I think back of some of the, the really neat times. I, I, at Royal Oaks was one of my favorite places too because there I had Lee Trevino as a member. He was already a member when I got to Royal Oaks in 1976. We had Lanny Watkins, D.A. Wybring, Lon Hinkle, David Graham. And we, there was always fun. Someone was always off of the, uh, a week off. And, and we had so much fun at Royal Oaks. And I'll never forget um, 1975, Chuck Roblins here and his wife Martha Chuck Hold your hand up, Martha. We went to Scotland for the International Four Ball, Martha and Chuck and I, and two other members and their wives and Eileen and I. So we get to, we get to, uh, I asked Lee, I said, Lee, we need some help getting on the golf courses in Scotland. Would you mind writing a letter to the captains of the club? He said, sure, I'll do that. He said, but Cookie, he said, let me tell you something. I'm a little concerned about you taking your golf swing across the pond. 
And I said, why is that? He said, I'm afraid you can't get parts for it over there. <laughs> So he arranged us to go to Scotland, and we had a wonderful time. And, and uh, so we're playing the old course, and, and uh, when you get to the 17th hole, I mean, it's just like it's just like heaven because in the course of a round, I think everybody has has the thought when you're playing the road hoses. God, I can't wait to get there. Another the thing, damn, I'm sure I can wait because this is scary. And when you're hitting it over the hotel, you hope. And so w Willie Atchison, who has been uh, Lee's uh, caddy for years in the in the in the Open Championship met us and his brother, and they double caddied for us for four days, and so they're there, and and Willie's double caddying for myself and Chuck, and we're on the road hole, and I managed to hit a pretty good drive down there on the left hand side of the of the fairway, just barely in the edge of the rough, and I looked at Willie, and I said, Willie, I said, what do you think I ought to hit? He thought of me, he's got the little skinny mustache, you know, you hide behind a rope, he's about 6'1 and can skinny, I was really jealous. Actually, I wasn't that, but anyway, but that's another story. And so Willie, I said, Willie, what do you think I should hit? He said, well, sir, he said, in 1972 British Open, Mr. Trevino hit a seven iron from almost this very spot. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, give me my seven iron. <laughs> Boy, I, I mean, I dropped that seven iron, I'm, I'm posing, you know, I'm just posing. Felt so good, right front center of the road hole. I said, Willie, that's 15 yards short. He said, so is Mr. Trevino, sir. <laughs> and I said, Willie, you gotta be the worst damn caddy I have ever seen in my life. He said, no, Mr. Cook, that'd be way too much of a coincidence. So we had a lot of fun at, at uh, working at Royal Oaks and seeing all those guys all the time. The members were outstanding. Mr. Roblin, Mr. Adelita over here that we, we've been basically around the world playing golf. And I, I can tell you that from my career, y'all want to have a drink? Wait, you may come back and start later. Y'all want to go get a drink? <laughs> Is that it's been the most joyous thing, the most love game I've ever seen in my life where, look at this, just look at all this love in this room, the love of the game of golf and what it's done for so many families. I'm, I'm not talking about Hall of Fame people, I'm talking about the children, the grandchildren, the ones that are coming up, my, like my two grandchildren, and what it means, the continuity, and we're about the only sport left with the integrity that the United States of America stands for and Texas and the world stands for, folks, and that's golf. I told you you need to put it down. So I'm, I'm almost finished, but I appreciate the time that y'all are listening to me. And I would like to recognize a, a really special person here that's a, a dignitary that uh, I just adore. And uh, her name's Norma Strait. Norma, would you stand up? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's George. No, Norma, stand up. You and George. Really? No, come on, fireman. See, George, you, all, you thought it was going to be you, didn't you? <laughs> but that's all my crowd back there at Cordillera Ranch, and I just love Cordillera Ranch. And Jimmy Walker's a member there, and uh, Dan Lord and all the rest of the group back there in the back, Jerry Merritt, and known for years. And so when you have this kind of support, and golf's a common denominator, it doesn't get any better than this. And uh, I'm going to leave you with this, is that... Uh, I have two mottos in golf. Number one is, is uh, I can play better than this, I just never have. <laughs> <clears throat> and my other one is, the only reason I play golf anymore is because the rest of my life is so perfect. <laughs> so it's, it's just been an honor for me, a love of the game, love of people, love each other, love everything you see, I don't care if it's a tree, a blade of grass, whatever. And love makes the world go around. And uh, right now, I'm going to accept this honor and this uh, award on behalf of Eileen, my former wife. And uh, because without her, I wouldn't be having this award. And I'm going to ask my two grandsons, Dylan and Braden, come up and help me with this trophy on behalf of their grandmother. And thank you for this honor.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.